I talked to my close friend. I got a lot of close friends in that community, the LGBTQ community. I don't even realize I had a whole LGBTQ weekend after that. I was shook a little bit. I said some of them might have seen. What that. do you mean by having an LGBTQ weekend? Because look, we had the fashion show, so I'm and I'm in them circles. It's nothing but LGBTQs oh, around, okay. all around. We were talking about how, That's you know, whatever. Huh? That was a little wild to just say. I guess it's wild if you think that I'm talking about whatever, but you see, what was wild? You just what said was you wild? had an LGBTQ. What was wild? You just said you what had a, was wild. Chad, you just said you had. A, you, Yo, it's the Mallory Bros Podcast, episode 191. Uh, happy Tuesday. I would say I'm excited for this week. It's the last week of the sun going down at a certain time. We're getting ready to get that. We're losing that hour of sleep, but we're about to have Hell the sun yeah. coming out earlier. I'm excited for that as well because my son wakes up at like 7.30 every oh, morning. Shit, How, so, are you excited to lose so hour? No, no, I'm excited, but I'm also like a little bit like, okay, when the fuck he about to stop <laughs> Waking up now. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. No I done built my life around that 7.30 point. But well, we ain't going to waste any time, Terrell. What's your, li what, what's your life like, King? It was a very just chill, you know, fuck it week. Not nothing, really, nothing really happened. I, I mean, I watched some TV. My son is in swimming lessons, and he's doing well. He got five gold stars his last class. Yeah, I know what that means, but that means you did uh, everything you were supposed to do. I mean that apple don't fall from that uncle tree. That mean that apple don't fall from that uncle tree. That mean he got his uncle drink. Oh, uh, he got his this uncle motherfucker. Gene. You can't push this motherfucker in the uh, water. I'm saying five gold stars and excelling in your in your. You class. gonna need Larry the Lobster to come help you. Wasn't he a lifeguard? Yeah, he was. It's so funny because honestly, what am I talking about? Excelling in class. We just had a podcast talking about how we said fuck SAT. Fuck it. Yeah. PSAT LSAT. No, nah, that's dope. And Terrell has to get in the water with his boy. I know that sucks. Fuck that. I can't wait till he gets to the age where I can just sit there on my phone for a little while for 30 minutes. It's over. All right. Let's drive yeah. off and go. There's certain things. Uh, I'll give y'all my re week recap was cool. It was a chill week. Nothing crazy happening. Keep going. I don't like when I don't like helping a nigga out. No, nah, all right, so bad. That just you just made that a topic. If you don't tell me that you're getting something off of me, I'm not just gonna let you do that. Without. Just try to help niggas out. This nigga's niggas. touching me while I'm holding on. Wait, I need to know what it is you're removing. Because what if, you know, if it's a bug on me and you get the bug off, I'd rather you do that I than bet, go, yeah, if it's oh a bug. God, it's a bug on you. Like, why if, do yeah. that? If you just do that, be like, it was a whatever. All right. It was a beetle on you. Pow. Picking lint off me make me feel like a woman should be doing it. Does that make me insecure, y'all? Yes. This is my twin brother right here. Why I haven't heard like that song about Jasmine Sullivan and Bryson Tiller. Why you being so insecure? You ever heard that joint? Yeah, yeah. For the insecure sound. You look like you got an R&B playlist, boy. Let me get, let me get my uh recap, my week recap. Y'all would be disappointed in some of the things that y'all would learn about me as a film major. But believe it or not, um, there's certain movies that I haven't seen. There's certain series I haven't seen. I'm trying to catch back up. But Terrell wants me to binge shows. Like he wants me to finish Succession. I still haven't finished. Uh, the Sopranos. I'm Ridiculous. like four episodes away from finishing The Sopranos, which I was telling Terrell, I don't see the end coming. It just seemed like they just kicking it. What you talking about, Sopranos? Yes. All right. It. Think about it. It, it is, though. The end of Breaking Bad is like, okay. Rap. You know? Yes. It's going to wrap. I feel like I got a couple episodes left in Sopranos, and I'm like... Them last episodes, you got to watch. If honestly, Sopranos, if you have not watched The Sopranos... It has one of the most controversial endings of all time. One of the most controversial endings for a TV show of all time. Down to the last second of the show. Right, you, look. When they go off, you some people are like, ah, that was great. And then some people are like, I know it didn't end like that. I only say all of this to say this. Because this ain't even got nothing to do with that. Okay. But I still got to finish that. Mm -hmm. But 
in trying to get all get my shit back watched, I rewatched a series or I started a series a movie trilogy that I haven't even seen yet. Ooh. John Wick. First time watching John Wick. I believe it or not, y'all. I know some of y'all are surprised. What? This nigga's never seen John Wick. I have never seen John. I had never seen John none Wick. of them. None of them. I watched the very first one. Uh, oh, so you seen the first one this past weekend? Yeah, was oh, my uh, first time watching it. Damn! Yeah. What the fuck? I've been. I really. I've always known about John Wick and seen scenes. I've seen this motherfucker's a beast with that Glock nineteen. He's a beast, and that's <laughs> and, and that's it. That's it. I watched the movie and I said, "Oh, literally, <laughs> the movie. You literally the movie. His wife dies." Literally, hold up, Terrence. Motherfuckers, that was might not have seen. Oh, hold up. I'm not giving y'all no type of courtesy because y'all gonna give me smoke for not seeing it. So I'm supposed to look out for the nah, ones no like me. Nah, no bullshit. It is four of them. <laughs> it's four of them by now. I just started, y'all. And y'all know the story of John Wick. I just think it's funny that he lost his dog. I mean, I'm sorry, he lost his wife. His wife gives him a dog like, ah, you know, you deserve to live a better life. Start with this. I thought that was dope as fuck. Dog dies and then Brud just really goes on a killing spree and that's it. It literally goes off, and I'm like, oh, so yeah, this really is just mayhem. And I feel like, you know what? I don't know why I thought John Wick had more of a... It's an action, it's an action franchise. It's dope, man. You got to like watch the... Like a tie. And some I of the was going to say one. also, do we look at Keanu Reeves as a great actor? Keanu is just a great guy. Because I was guy. watching that joint like Keanu with the, with the quippy... Uh, Starts here. Um, Keanu Reeves is not the most, um, you know, incredible, like, yeah. gonna, wow, Oscar actor. He's just a great fucking guy in real life. He is. He got a, people he's a, love a decent yeah. soul type shit. Uh-huh. I'm, at, I'm, on, I'm on my way to John Wick 2. But other than that, my life has been a breeze, I would say. Everybody has ups and downs, so shit ain't perfect. But that was the one standout thing. I said, you know what? They'd probably be surprised to know. I actually haven't seen John Wick. But I'm excited to get to four. Niggas were saying four was snubbed at the Oscars. What? Wow. Y'all made it that far. I got to watch that joint. And you know what? I'll tell you, I haven't seen... They just put Equalizer 3 on uh, Netflix. Equalizer. Yeah. I've only seen Equalizer 1. I've never seen the second one. So... I'm not really too interested in... Like, my dad is a Home Depot... My dad works at Home Depot. I worked there for a long time. I'm not real interested in watching the movie about the old guy. And, See? And, and it has nothing to do with race. But I just feel like Equalizer, I gravitated away from because it's Denzel Washington. And it feels like he ain't even acting for real, for real. This is Denzel Washington, natural form killing niggas. <laughs> But I don't think it's bad though. I just, you know, it's good you because they under the radar. The way he move and be like, all right, Ben, I'm gonna smack this motherfucker in the face and I'm gonna move, throw the glass at him all within six seconds. Yeah, he's like, oh, I'm gonna kill everybody. I'm gonna kill everybody in here. And then, bro, he get confident with that joint and be like, you really wanna fuck with me? Your old ass is not about to kill all of us. Uh huh. That clunky ass watch he got. I always think about this John Wick and Equalizer are movies where like the universe moves around the main character and not the opposite. Uh huh. Like, I'm fighting 30 dudes. Everybody's waiting until I beat. I beat. I, I go, boom. Then you throw your punch. Uh-huh. Movies like that are cool, but also you kind of understand what you get. Yeah. Because you're not going to tell me Denzel Washington at 60. I don't give a fuck how skilled you are. You're getting dogged by more than four people. You see niggas coming with guns and they all are like trying to get their aim and then bow. Yeah, like, hold like, on. I'm trying to get my aim. They would have been cut this nigga. <laughs> You know what I will say? These kids nowadays do not have a spy kids. Do you remember how cool it was? Nah, yeah. Remember they had to watch? And it's crazy because a lot of the shit that they ended up having, we had. Remember they video watched each other on the watch? Yeah, the video now, watch. you can do your FaceTime from your watch. You could get all your satellite shit. There was shit that popped up. Remember Junie glasses went like that? Nah, yeah. It but was just shit back then that was cool. That The bad thing is like they were able to see like futuristic shit with that. But I feel like... What do we have now that's you could say, oh, this is futuristic? A futuristic element of now, na- like creating futuristic content now is like Dune shit, like shit that looks like. Other now, Dune is next like a, worldly. Next worldly. Shout out to everybody that saw Dune too. I have not seen it yet. I've been hearing Neither. nothing but great things about it. But I would like to see Christopher Nolan do some futuristic shit, like where cars fly, where motherfucker getting a Bruce Wayne get in the car and it lifts, and I'm in traffic but in the sky. 
I don't want him to do that. I just want him to do it right. I want him to go back. I want him to go back that way. Because that, I feel like he's going to... With Tenet, Tenet scares me from Nolan doing that. Because it's going to be too fucking advanced. Just do some... I got to like, rewatch it. He went back to Auburn. You went too far back. I'm going back up this way and just do... <laughs> That's the bad thing with me. I want everybody to do a regular drama, crime, regular uh -huh. story. All right, bet. So pretty much the talk of the whole week, weekend, has been this drama between uh, Meek Mill and academics regarding the whole Diddy situation. And the TL was having a little bit of a time um, with the news. Basically, Diddy is brought up on, an, on another lawsuit about something where, long story less long, there's a bunch of disgusting shit. In it, but the one thing that stuck out from it was the fact that um, Diddy had sexual relations with a rapper from Philadelphia that used to date Nicki Minaj, and everybody went crazy on me, calling him all types of gay, and it I, just was a very eye-opening. Some of it was funny, yeah, over Bro, the weekend. I think it was definitely like shocking news. It's shocking to hear that it, it, it could have been two NFL players. It could have been two basketball players. It could be anything. Hearing news that this dude slept with this dude and you don't know their sexual orientation, I feel like that's always going to cause like a big spark in the, in the mm -hmm. world. Everybody's going to talk about it. That's understood. It does seem like the homophobia jumped out just a little too much with y'all. I've been spoken. I've been outspoken about it on this podcast before. About how some of the shit that we do and jokes and, and thinking it's funny. Like we talked about the other episode. I forget the name of that episode. But Pause. we were talking about it was an episode called Pause, yeah, of this podcast. Um That's a great episode. That's a great episode. And that that y'all go and look at that chapter where we talked about pause and how saying pause, hold up, pause. That's actually homophobic when you do that. And I feel like Y'all were able to see a lot of that with the Meek Mill situation. Before I even launch into that, Terry, what do you think? Do you Did you see how the homophobia... And we're not just only going to focus on that, because I don't want to only make it seem like this whole weekend was that. But I do yeah, think yeah. it's something that we want to pinpoint. I don't know if I would call it homophobia. Some of it was, yes. I just think acting like people shouldn't be surprised. Yeah. It's not like... Because this is my thing. It's not like Meek Mill came out and said, bet y'all, I'm gay. So this is my life. The news came out that he slept with Diddy. Which would be crazy if it was true, which nobody I don't think really takes it, thinks it's really happened. Right? Yeah. But people made jokes about it. And it was, but it, I mean, I, I guess you're right. People not I just don't think people have an issue with if he was. It's the situation itself that made it. Isaiah Rashad had a crazy video leak of him. And you see how the world re received it? It was like, you know what? Who cares? Because we saw that this could go a certain way. And you know what? We're not even about to do that to bro. Yeah. If the, if the same thing happened with Meek, I don't know if people would be that graceful with Meek. I'm not going to lie. But I think it's more about Meek than it is. You see, his I, sexual preference. It's more about the situation. I had a situation where Bruh painted his nails, said that's how he got girls. I said, hold up. That that's not helping you get girls, painting your nails like that. Because believe it or not, I don't think the ladies is checking for that. I feel like you did that because you seen somebody else do it. And believe it or not, the person you saw do that was gay. So he wasn't checking for girls. So that's where your inspo was. And everybody called me homophobic because I'm worried about, just literally worried about another man's nails. Not the fact that I disagree with that his nails got him women. People are like, the fact that you are making a comment about what he thinks about his nails Makes you homophobic. Sarah, I was not, told. Well, well, that's not what but that's happened. The, but look, that's not even what happened to you. That's literally that. that is, okay, so I can't tell you that that's what happened to me. That literally is what you happened. You made it seem like just because you said something about the nails, you it was because you implied. So you that see, you it okay, was the that. implication. It wasn't just because you said something about the nails. Implication, right? 
I, I was understood with that. When, when, when people was getting at me, I talked to my close friend. I got a lot of close friends in that community, the LGBTQ community. I don't even realize I had a whole LGBTQ weekend after that. I was shook a little bit. I said, some of them might have seen What that. do you mean by having an LGBTQ weekend? Because, look, we had the fashion show, so I'm, and I'm in them circles. There's nothing but LGBTQs oh, around, okay. all around. We were talking about how, That's you know, whatever. Huh? That was a little wild to just say. I guess it's wild if you think that I'm talking about whatever, but you see, what was wild? You what just said was you wild? had an LGBTQ. What was wild? You just said you what had a, was wild. Chance, you just said you had an LGBTQ see? weekend. That's wild. Think about it. What if I said, all right, anyway, you see, low key, you're being Terrence, a little homophobic, no, sir. That's wild. You just said that, Terrence. Come on. <laughs> it's just crazy that you said that. I, I had an LGBT weekend. I was, I was, I what was. What if I said I had a, and y'all don't like when I, when I, when I pair it with, 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 the black experience? Terrence, stop. See, I don't like that because you're just an ignorant. You're no, just ignorant. because. Because you don't want to hear examples. It's that not I'm the about, same. About. But you're being homophobic. Because that I said I had an LGBTQ it. weekend where I was amongst the, I was, in, I was engulfing the whole community. You didn't say that. You said, I didn't that's LGBTQ what I weekend. meant. I said, hold up. That's what I meant. What? <laughs> but I got to explain that further for you for what? Why? Because what did you mean by that? What if I meant, what if I meant the other? Then that would be wild. Why would it be wild? It would be wild because it's you, and I know that's not nah, you. Nah, fuck that. And that it, is the thing this with is Meek. The Ted, that's the that thing with Meek. Talking about. It's not about the fact that Meek would, if he was that, you know what I'm saying? It's the fact, the way we found out, and who's involved, and because it's you. Your shock and awe at finding out somebody's sexual orientation doesn't give you the right to make jokes and be homophobic towards them because you are so shocked. Oh, there's a there's a celebrity. What you're basically saying is, come on, man, it's Diddy and it's Diddy and Meek. And you know what? I just said the shit is crazy. I'm not gonna sit here and say it's not. Especially Meek, you are you are essentially a gangster rapper. So like, I'm not gonna sit here and count them out. All I'm gonna say is some of y'all's focus on Meek being gay was very much like, whoa, there's a lot of focus on that. And I'm only bringing this up to say homophobia is not just being rude to somebody and saying you don't like what their sexual orientation is. Oh, you're this. You need to get the fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? Homophobia is the same in my, op in my opinion. Homophobia can be received the same way that racism can be received. Not that they are the same. Okay. The same way I can send They're you a not, postcard though. and I can send you a package. Are they the same? No. But they both get received the same. Right? So before y'all try to say I'm comparing it to racism, I'm not saying they are the same. I'm saying we're able to say, you know what? What you just said was racist and you might not know. So let me help you. All I'm doing for y'all, some of the things that we do are homophobic and we might not know. And this situation with Meek Mill, all I'm going to say to you, I'm going to give you the floor. Since you got an attitude and you got your hand on your face. I feel like people do know and they really don't care. And that's not a good thing. But, but it's you're not the same. It as if like, no, you're, it's, you're not saying because it's it not it's, the same as like racism. These people know very well that they are making a joke that could be received that way. They don't care. People do not care. When we play the pause game and you say, oh, that's homophobic, niggas don't really care. They just... You don't work. care because it doesn't affect you, but if somebody was around you... You're right, though. ...making right. jokes about your race, then you would understand how, hey, I get that's a joke, but that's offensive to me. That's my thing. Like you said, that's wild. I want y'all to imagine you sitting with four black, four white dudes and you the only black dude. Right? Y'all mm -hmm. don't like when I do this. It's okay. It's just annoying because racism is way different. It has way different... It's so way, are you it's unable... Different. So I'm not able to use racist to help you understand homophobia it, because racism those two are is, different? Yes. You're, you're, you're unable to sit and listen... Why can't you make your because point? Because I can... Can I not tell you... Without that, bringing up Terrell, racism. Is it okay that I can't, I can't use it even though I told you that it literally isn't the same? That they're, they're both 
Sonic, they're both completely different, but I can't they're use it comparable. as an example to help you understand. You're not even gonna let me get it off. I just don't Fuck think they're. It. I don't think they're comparable. You and you're might trying not, but to I compare them. But I, but like you're not even letting me compare because you don't like the fact that I'm comparing them. They are, are comparable. They're not the same, but they are very comparable. It is the world not getting it at one point and now needing to get it. All right. You trying to make excuses it's for a bunch of homophobia I'm by not. saying that people are shocked that it's Diddy and people don't give a fuck. So if I Damn. tell you that people are being racist and people are making racist remarks and you say, well, they don't give a fuck. So should I just shut the fuck up about it? I just want you to. Well, I, I'm not saying you're wrong about anything you're saying. You saying I'm not people don't give a fuck. Nigga. I'm saying people do know that it's homophobia. I don't but think it's everybody like trying knows to that t- that's homophobia. Like you don't think people don't think pause is homophobic. So that's like you saying I think people know pause is homophobia. I don't think people know pause to be homophobic. I think the people that were making jokes about Meek Mill being that know that those jokes could be received that way. It's the same. It's like telling a racist person that they're being racist. They know. They, no, they, what, you don't have to tell them. They know. I feel like what's happening here is I'm trying to say that people were being racist on the TL, and you're like, well, they know. And, well, it was celebrities. So, and it's like, you're not even letting me get off that I think that it was homophobia, what they were saying, because you're trying to mask it under the fact that these are two celebrities. Hey. That's not true. You're trying to compare it to racism. Go ahead, though, but you was getting ready to say something about it. I'm interested to see how you're going to compare the two. If you sit in there and you're the only black person, I'm about to just take what you just said. If you sit in there with four white dudes, you're the only black dude, you minding your business. They eating or whatever. This dude said, you know what? I was with black folk. Or, or let's say he said, I had a soul food weekend. Right? Or I had a black culture weekend. And somebody says, whoa, what do you mean by that? That's wild. You're black. You sitting there would be like, what's wild about having a black culture weekend? Well, what'd you do? Well, I was just with a bunch of black people and I ate this. Oh, okay. I was making sure because it was almost wild you saying that. What was about to be wild? Like, or like, oh, I thought you were saying that you had, like, I don't know. I thought, I thought you was maybe on some black stuff. Oh, I don't know. I thought you was maybe with the blacks. Oh, oh, hold on. Wait. I was telling Terrell, you saw people saying stuff like, Damn, I hate to see it happen to Meek. What happened to him? If he got fucked by Diddy, it would be wild. That's not wild. It's wild, but at a certain point, I don't. if we don't give a fuck, why am I tweeting? Like, that's my thing. I don't give a fuck. And I'm, I'm going to let y'all know this now. I am somebody that don't give a fuck. I'm going to just say this and leave it because I feel like this convo is going lefty and we stand on it a long time. I want y'all to look at the Corey Holcomb situation and what Corey Holcomb said about the Cat Williams and Shannon Sharp interview. Sh- Corey Holcomb says that Cat Will... No, not Corey Holcomb. I'm sorry. Not Corey Holcomb, y'all. It's Eddie Griffin. Eddie Griffin got on stage and was making jokes about Shannon Sharp saying that Shannon was gay. Shannon was... Sitting there, he got his balls all in cat face and Cat Williams trying not to look at his balls. I told Terrell this. Let's look at this. When I watched that interview, I didn't think about Shannon Sharp's balls in Cat Williams' face. I didn't think about Cat Williams thinking about that. And I don't think Shannon Sharp was doing that. The only person who was thinking about that was who made the joke, Eddie Griffin. I don't think y'all starting to see what I see where it's like, who's really thinking of the gay shit? All of you niggas with all of your memes and creativity. Oh, this is going to be Meek when he ride a bike. This how Meek do this. This how Meek do that. Oh, look at all of this. Y'all were very creative. And I feel like, I don't know if that community would come out and say it because it might not be worth the fight, but yo. Making jokes about somebody who might actually be gay, even if he got, even if you found out that he's getting slammed by an A-list celebrity, y'all love to laugh at motherfuckers. But what if Meek Mill was really gay and the nigga hurt him, was it hurt himself? Do you that know that everybody wild. would be responsible? All of your jokes, because it ain't a joke. It is legit homophobia. Imagine you. This is what I told Terrell, and y'all might think this is super far-fetched. And I'm, I'm sorry, I'm long with it. 
I told Terrell, imagine you was acting like you was this white dude and you painted your face like you was white and then they splash you with water one day and they find out that you're black and they're like, oh, we always knew. The signs were always there. Damn. Everybody's like, holy shit, he's black. You would be like, damn, I hate they found out that I'm this. And I think y'all need to realize that if you don't give a fuck about somebody's sexual, sexual orientation, all of the jokes, come on, y'all. I think it's if, homophobia. And nobody wants to say it, I will. I don't give a fuck. I think, I'm not making a thousand jokes about another nigga's sexual orientation because I don't care. If you are... Terrence, you pick and choose, though. I don't pick and choose. You'll no, be, I do not. When? Because you'll be quick to call out these niggas for their self-care... And you don't like niggas doing the uh none of that shit. You, has to do you, with you a do sexual, sexual orientation. but you do a lot of implication, and this is what I'm talking about. You don't like when niggas do their facial routines. You don't want people doing content like women. You don't want people to be doing their uh nails and stuff like that. You got all these things where you like, oh no, that's for girls. This ain't that. You doing this because they do it. You got all this stuff, but then you want to act like you all holier than thou. And oh, I ain't talking about a bisexual orientation. I'm holier than thou for standing up for them. Y'all hear that? I'm holding Terrence, it now for no. speaking up for them. You see, I'm not changing it. True. That's not what I said. All that I'm stuff saying, you said that I said, you be the one that say, you don't even think niggas should express to their girl how they feel. I don't, because you're a man. What are we talking about? Are we talking about interpersonal relationships and communication, or are we talking about sexual preference? Because niggas not joking about me talking about nails. Niggas not joking about... Me feeling like men are doing feminine things. I do a lot of feminine. I do a lot of feminine things. Y'all know there's nothing wrong with a man doing feminine things to push the whatever. I think we take it too far. There's a fine line. You can get you a designer bag, but when you got a designer bag and you throwing over it, throwing it over your shoulder, now you you acting feminine. You can get What's your the problem nails, with that. You can get your nails painted in that clear because we've seen niggas do that for years. Once you start getting sunflowers and ladybugs on it. Oh, that's feminine. There's nothing wrong with that. And none of this has to do with a nigga's sexual orientation. Me not liking you just your said, shirt and saying that it looks like a shirt a woman should wear, that has nothing to do with who you choose to sleep with. That's my opinion on fashion. Terrence, that's my opinion no. on that. That has nothing to do it with... It does. I've never judged anybody for who they chose to sleep with. And that's what people are doing now. That's not what I be doing. It's, 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 it's not... You're not... Direct. That's why I said it's implication. I never You're impl implying that them doing what's feminine is wrong. No, I did not. Yes, you are. You saying I niggas said should it's not. Feminine. But you make it. But you're implying. What's the problem? If you're implying that it's wrong, but niggas start putting. If I want to get my nails painted and I want to do a, a damn uh, Care Bears. Yeah, I feel like that's for women. You're gonna say that's for women. So you're implying that what I'm doing. Is something that I should not be doing as a man, okay. right? Okay, yeah. So that's you implying that those <laughs> actions are wrong. Okay. I'm cooking a nigga. <laughs> you're because saying you're cooking me. You're but when did I talk about a nigga? You're implying. Okay, I'm implying that I don't like your painting your nails. What does that have to do with who you choose to sleep with? Because Nobody. Because, it's not see, homophobia okay, it's to not like, like you painting your nails. It's homophobia oh to my God. say this is like that saying, you're painting your nails because gay dudes do it, and I don't like that. That's homophobia. It's not homophobia to not like that men are doing feminine things. It's why don't you like that they don't, they're, they're doing it, though? Because, it, because it's the same way a woman cannot like a man doing women things. So what if the man is Is dead? a woman a homophobe if the man just wants to stay home and clean all day and he don't want to take out the trash? He doesn't want to do this. He just wants to stay home, do his face routine. Is a woman a homophobe for not liking that? Nobody said that, Terrence. No, but that's what you're comparing no. me to because I'm saying I'm not but this. You're imp but if you imply... Because women do it all the time. Yeah. Women will say, hmm, you're... Think about this. I see his antics. How you feel He's about... playing semantics. T, how you feel about... Is this the one? Yes, the one. I see the games he plays. I see the game. I can play. finally oh, use it. Get the fuck out of here. I see what he's doing. This is what I say. You know how girls be like, you have such a problem. Maybe you're, maybe you like. What problem whatever. do I have? What problem? But you see how they, you see how, you see the implication? That's, they're not saying that it would be a problem if you were gay, but they're still implying that you are. I've never they're implied. They're never saying that it's a problem. I've never implied. But the implication shows that, yeah, you didn't say that. 
But you meant it. Terrell, my implication, like you just proved, and I smiled because I said this nigga's proving something that I already know. My, in- my implication is just proof that I might disagree with what they doing. I might not like what they doing. But it's not an implication on me. I never made an implication of their sexual orientation. I never did. And you're losing because right, okay. I never did. And we, and, let's and look, back I'm not to, trying to get, you know. Let's get back to the thing. This is what I will say. It is fucked up that people are doing that. But I do think we, like I said, Isaiah Rashad had a video come out of him. Clear yeah. cut. It was him. It was the, it was like Isaiah Rashad is no meek but, but think about this though. He's still a rapper. And I got respect for him. He's still a rapper. He's still, and, and, and a lot of people would say that he was kind of like a Meek level. Meek is a little bit more mainstream. A little bit more. A little bit more. Then Isaiah are, Rashad, Isaiah Rashad is TDE. Isaiah Rashad has songs about, you know, women, X, Y, Z. To have that video come out was way more shocking than what the paper said about what people said was Meek. But since people love Isaiah Rashad, he got grace. The nigga got a Joe Budden interview. Everybody said, fuck it. You know what? This is who you are. Meek, people like to joke with. Everything with Meek is a joke. So as soon as he has some shit like this come out, everybody doesn't have grace. They got jokes. And it's connected to Diddy, who's disgusting. And Meek doesn't help himself because he, like, fights it with... So ah. I'm, but this is what I will say. I did want to say this. Because... There is a weird trend right now with trying to make people something that they not just out of nowhere. Like, I, I don't like what they're trying to do with Shannon Sharp. It seemed like Shannon Sharp does the Cat Williams in a, interview. That joint got 60 million views right now. Like, everybody's happy. Like, Shay, Club Shay Shay blowing up. And you got other black people, Corey Holcomb, Mike Epps, Eddie Griffin, other comedians, I guess. I don't know if it's some spice with Cat or what. But they're choosing to try and literally out of nowhere create this narrative that Shannon is gay. Yeah. And Shannon kind of stopped addressing it because it is what it is. But it's just kind of like, why is this a thing that's so normal? It is homophobia to us to a, a certain extent. It is. Because they're not saying he's gay like they're trying to uncover some shit that we don't know. They're trying to slight him by saying he's gay. And they're just blatant with it. It's not even like, did y'all see this? I don't know. They're saying, that nigga's gay. It's like the best Why example doing I can give for my black folks watching this is, or any your race, imagine if they started saying, you know what, this, this, and that, but guess what? Y'all don't even know he's black. That Look at him. You see the way that he walking? Look, he eating chicken. You see how he eating chicken? You see, see how he eating like watermelon? I don't like He that. is black. You would be sitting there saying Sam, this. I you would be feeling this, this fucking way right example. Here. This is how you would feel. Hold on, wait. Because why is it? Because no. What's because you just said some him shit being black if he is. Oh, we oh. don't eat the most chicken. You see the way we don't eat the most sit. watermelon. Watch this. Look. Those are also myths. So you see, I don't like that. But you see how it's a stereotype? Shit. No, because that's because not the Because you same. see how it's a stereotype? Shannon Sharp isn't Shannon doing Sharp. gay shit. Shannon Sharp wearing tight clothes. And Shannon Sharp, the way he walk, they'll say, oh, because he called himself Shay Shay. Then he must be because they. That's what I it is. I don't think it's because of the things he's doing. I think they're just doing it because. Terrell, they definitely doing it because he wears tighter clothes. You ain't see the video where he got out the car <laughs> in front of the total one? No, nah, that was funny as shit. <laughs> but I don't think that they're... Just because he called himself... I feel like it's like a... It feels more covert. It feels like you're just... You didn't have anything to say about him, so you're going to try so and make to go him... His it's not that he yeah. was... We have seen people that are zesty or whatever, and it's like, this man might have some sugar in the tank. People have said that before. Yeah. Shannon never really gave off that vibe. This is a brand new... Y'all are just making him this. This is why and I like you saying... That's why I say it's... This is why I don't like the example you use, because you take black stereotypes that aren't even really all the way true, and I don't like that. This is exactly why I don't like that. I don't see how you don't see... I don't see how you don't see the similarities in the fact that people are looking at the outside and saying, oh, if I were eating fried chicken, if I were listening to hip hop, and somebody said, you know what, look at it, you see the way, if I was a white dude. Do black people eat the most fried chicken? Do gay people do, are do all what, gay do, men do, are all do all gay men have a name like Shay Shay? Do all gay men wear tight clothes? No, I don't think, but it's easy to take a I don't stereotype think tight clothes and throw. It's easy to take a stereotype and throw. Oh, 
That's why I said y'all would understand if people were talking about I get what you your said. community in that way. And the only community that we have is the black community or it, it is your white community, your uh, Latin community or whatever community you're in. I want you to p picture people talking about that community like that. I've been saying this for a minute. There's nothing new I'm pushing. You can't say that I'm sitting here trying to switch it up. I've been saying this since the pause episode. It is backdoor homophobia. I'm not a homophobe. I have no reason to be a homophobe. When people try to call but me a homophobe for like what I said, how could I be a homophobe? I'm the nigga that's on here wearing a woman's watch. I'm the nigga on here with the heart. But you don't like when niggas shaved. paint their nails. Because I think But it's you don't a, like when people do a facial. Because guess what, bro? Because that's not manly enough. But I, you, so you get to push I the boundaries, but other said, niggas don't. See how you push narratives? I never said I didn't like when niggas paint their nails. I never said I didn't like when niggas do facials. I don't like the way certain niggas do it. You paint your nails the clear coat and you take okay, care of your tense. nails and get, get manicures. That's one thing. Getting designs and getting colors, I just don't agree with. You do your own face. I do a facial every night, low key. I do a facial every, every night, low key. Am I posting it like a woman and putting shit on my face and doing all of that shit and making female content like them? But you just said you yeah. have a woman's watch that you wear. Right, because like I said. So how would you feel about somebody that said, if, oh, you got on a woman's watch? You if somebody said, shouldn't oh, have that. Or if whatever. somebody said they didn't like it. You know how many niggas killed me for the woman's watch? You know how many niggas told me never wear it again? You know how many niggas did I say, wow, you're homophobic? Or no, you have a preference. You just don't want me to wear a woman's watch. I'm not going to sit here and... So you have Am I going to feel bad? Oh my God, you're so worried about what watch I have on. No, because I'm not gay. I don't have no type of, you know what I'm saying? There's nothing in me that's going to feel, I know what I'm doing. So if you do it, why are you so bothered when other people do it in you different ways? You see how y'all will say, why are you so bothered? Because somebody doesn't like what because you do. Because you get bothered. If somebody say that. With people that's making content, that's, that's painting their nails. Nobody is bothered. I've never been bothered by a nigga painting his nails. I've been bothered by a nigga acting like this is something that you get women for. That's the only thing that's ever bothered me. I don't want to do it. I will never do it, but it doesn't bother me. We live in a world nowadays, if you say you don't like some shit, you're mad. You're angry. No, I'm not. I just don't like it. And me not liking it does not make me a homophobe. It does not make me... I feel like I'm cutting your ass up this you're episode. Not. It's, you're the type. You're the nigga that's that's that does shit, and now you want to be the nigga to speak on it. But you low key are guilty of it. I'm not. I've never. I've never talked about a nigga's sexual orientation. But you see, you get around it by saying I've never directly said. I've never spoken okay. on if a nigga was gay or not. Me, me not liking y'all doing feminine content. It's not me like. That has nothing to do with you who you're sleeping with. What if he was care. gay? Would it be okay if he was doing that content if he was gay? If he was, if, if he's gay and he's doing the same content painting his nails, that's okay. If he's gay, yeah. If he's gay and he's painting his nails and whatever, and and so, Terrell, I just caught the nigga. <laughs> My God, you did because not. you're confirming that I'm you saying, wouldn't have a problem if his sexual orientation was that if he, he was, was gay. Gay, I wouldn't think so. Oh my God! When you do have an issue, I don't. The have implication an issue. is I might there. Not like to see that you don't like it because okay, if he was okay, so I'm looking for homophobia in me Ted, right now. This is too long. I want you to show me the homophobia. Just because this is too long of a this is, this is a long. great this is a great conversation, y'all. I feel like the people who watch this, I feel like this is a good combo because it's it, not homophobia. It's Terrence, but you're. I'm yeah, saying yeah, yeah. If, I'm, if if he's painting his nails and he's wearing purses and he's wearing women's clothes and I know that and he's gay, it's fine. I don't really have, even have to know who you sleep with. I don't care what you're doing. As a straight man, you're acting and, and you're a straight dude trying to push off that, yeah, this is what we do now. Jalen Green in the NBA, you know what I'm saying? Walking around with the with the nails and the purses, Right? When we look at you away and Dylan say, Green. he's the one that played for the Rockets. Played for the Rockets. Uh -huh. When we look at you away and say, hmm, I wonder if he might be a part of the LGBTQ community because he's wearing purses and painting his nails, right? That's not homophobic. We're just aligning you with who we know to normally behave in this feminine way. But you're you calling the people say, that criticize Meek. 
You can't say, hold up. You think because I got my nails painted and I got a purse on and I'm doing a facial and I'm watching Sex in the City, you think I'm gay? Oh, my God, you need help. What? I'm literally thinking I didn't know a man would be, or I didn't know a straight that man. is homophobic. That was homophobic to not add straight. And I, you see, I cracked myself. But you can't admit your homophobia. You grass dressed ass nigga. This nigga's dressed like Easter Sunday like shit. Fuck hey, out of here, boy. You, like, you boy, got on a Martha here, Stewart. Look at you. This boy, nigga got you a Martha like a... Stewart shirt on. Fuck out of here, boy. You look like you're getting ready to go and bake an Easter okay, Sunday. Okay, look at you, boy. You look uh, like you just you look like you look like a nigga from prison. Break. Fuck, fuck out of here. here. You look like you work at Lowe's. You look, the like they said, you look like you work at the garden department and Lowe's just the, the upscale version. And they got y'all like, over there with fits on selling upscale mulch and okay. upscale begonias. You look like you work at the hookah shop next to the gas station. This nigga sell selling pipes tulips and, and begonias. And shisha. You selling shisha all day. The cotton candy is good. The cotton candy is good. <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> Fuck out of here, boy. <laughs> anyway. If you want to go, if you want to go to flavor, get mint. Always go with mint. <laughs> That's what they tell you. They always tell you, get a mint. So you really feel it. Mint is the clean as the goat. Bring you up. <laughs> all right. Um, that was a good combo. Fun combo. All in all, though, you are, I will say this. I will say this. I do think you're right about the fact that it is, it was fucked up. And we do have a weird culture right now where we try to make everybody gay or it, it is a weird thing and it is homophobic. All I'll say is everything's so funny. Everything is so funny until the joke's on you. Then, oh, that's fucked up. We still getting on stage. Every time we have an issue, it's, oh, it's because I'm black. Oh, and I feel like it's because I'm black. Fuck out of here. But we got all the fucking jokes. But we the most sensitive motherfuckers. I don't like that. I don't like that because it do be because people are black. And you can't say that as we if be the it's most, not the truth sometimes. My criticism it is. for my community is we the most sensitive motherfuckers on earth. But we got all the jokes. That's all I'll say. We can joke about everybody else. But soon as somebody joke on us, we want to bring up everything we've been through. The kid that gets picked on, been through the most, that's been through the most, mm -hmm. normally will be the one to talk a bunch of shit because they're the ones that have endured shit. That doesn't make them right. You getting your ass whipped at home and you come home treating my kid like shit. I'm supposed to feel sorry for that's you? That's not true. That's not true. That's not what, I, that's not what it is. You look like a John Deere if woman's If you're collection. the one that picked on me and I'm talking shit about you, what? <laughs> Fuck out of here, boy. I said you look like John Deere woman's collection. You said a woman's, woman's, woman's gardening tools. Woman's collection. Really? Terrell! <laughs> Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> this is crazy, right? Yeah. Fuck out of here. Why not? Everyone's gonna like that. Come on, let's. We got other stuff to get to. Oh yeah, we do, we do, we do, we do, we do. Okay, so I gotta. Um, we're gonna switch the topic. Uh, very funny. This one thing that I do want to say. Last week, Damian Lillard talked about how he is in Milwaukee. He's playing with the Milwaukee Bucks. He moved from Portland. He used to be with the Trailblazers. Unfortunately, I'm not in the bros business, but it, he is an NBA star, so we speak on it. He's uh divorcing his. His long, it was a long time, almost like his childhood, I feel like, joint. But they uh -huh. were married. They got a couple kids, maybe three kids. So he's gone from, I think, living with Shorty to living by himself out in, in Milwaukee. He talked about just going to practice and just playing video games all day and just life being boring. I'm not here to talk about Damian Lillard. That's an old topic. But one thing I do want to tell y'all is a lot of you are thinking of moving out and being on your own. Uh... Me and this guy right here, I've had our fair share of move-ins, move-outs, as y'all know from the last week. Um, but I think some of you, some of you get a lot uh, of a excitement with it, but I don't think you think about the entire process. What I wanted to come on here and say is moving has a downside. I know you're excited to move. You're excited to live on your own, be able to go wherever you want. It's probably you, you and your friends, you and something. Um, and if you're moving out in your hometown, I feel like you'll be a little bit more comfortable. If you're moving right up the street from your mom's, you're good. Me and a lot of other people, Dame Lillard, some of you need to realize that when you move, the downside is you're really moving out of your comfort zone. 
Like, and the only reason why I say that is because when you think about moving, you think about how you're uncomfortable in the crib. Mm -hmm. And then when you think about moving out, you think, I need to be more comfortable. I'm sick of living here in this way. I want to live on my own. I don't think y'all realize that when you move out of your folks' crib, or maybe it's something to just keep it in your mind, when you move out anywhere, you're going, your, and I got little notes right here, where you eat, switch up. The food spots that you used to go into, that's if you move out of town, though. That's like what I'm saying. Moving if you're moving out to of a different state. Think about it. I move. I didn't move out of town, but I moved f too far away from my food spot. If you move thirty minutes away from where you used to live, you're not driving thirty minutes back. Nah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? The way that you sleep, um, the little places you go for gas, shit like that. I'm telling you, the people that you know are close. The people that you know are far. I've been having trouble with gas stations. All I'm only gonna say this is a short message. If you're moving out, just understand you're gonna be moving into an uncomfortable position to get comfortable. You have to make that new place comfortable again, and it's a process. Dame Lillard went from having Shorty in the house, three kids, Portland, I'm the man, I know everybody, to now I'm out in Milwaukee, I don't really know where everything is, I don't really know where this at, you just got you. That's and it. some of y'all don't realize that's a very dark situation when you're sitting in that new place, and it's just you, and... Damn, well, what do I do? Well, where do I go? That is not, that's not the brightest part of, of your shit. I'll say that's a dark part of it. That's all I'll say. Dame is a multi-millionaire. I definitely don't feel sorry for Dame. You're good. I also don't believe you. I think he's recruiting. I think he's trying to get him a piece. And he, that's how you let motherfuckers know. That's like posting on my dolo shit the rest of the 2024 to let people know you're single. No bullshit. I was thinking that too, but I'm also thinking I that I do a, get it though, because when you move out, like it is, it is like an adjustment. You gotta make a new place home, and you gotta, you know, what girl would want to talk to Dame Lillard, fresh off a of divorce? He's a big fucking move, big fucking star. Are you kidding? Y'all think that? Oh, he can get any girl he wants. Y'all think these chicks want to really women deal with women that talk to Future, knowing he got eight baby mamas or whatever? But guess what? He's got Millie's. That's very true, but look. Dame at the is a perfect catch for somebody. Look at the bro. When you think about a, a, up, a dope, upstanding woman, is not gonna talk the future. He's not looking for a dope, upstanding woman. And that's why I'm saying you can't say Dame Lillard could get whatever you want. Dame Lillard could still get a dope, upstanding woman. He's divorced. He has kids that he does not live with. Right. He got a new place in Milwaukee. He is literally a walking ticket for the next person that. Come That's very way. true. He definitely could be on his, you know, he trying to. Yeah. Yeah. He trying to say, yeah. Well, I really yeah. just be in a crib with it. I don't really be doing nothing. Wish I had a piece with me. Then maybe I would be uh, here. Yeah. Leaps. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to send you this audio. Uh, this is the tweet that I wanted to show you. I don't know if you saw this. I didn't see it, but it looks yes, like a fucking I'm boomer. Glad he did it. A fucking boomer with a with an opinion. I'm very interested to see what Terrell has to say about this because I know Terrell's opinion, but oh my god! All right, here we go. Fuck these grown ass kids. You know, I'm just reading over messages, and I realize there's nothing we could have did to change the way they think about their childhood. There's not a motherfucking thing we could have did different to change the opinion that they have of us when they was kids. I don't owe them nothing now that they are grown. So here is my thing. What are you doing with your life to change what you think and what you say happened in your childhood? If you haven't changed anything in your life and you still have a fucked up life and faulting everybody for your bad decisions, then that's your fault and you're fucked up. I don't owe you shit, and you don't owe me nothing. And that's the way I think of life now. <laughs> Terrence, what do you think about that? <laughs> I think I thought that was very telling to hear because, of course, I disagree. I ain't okay. going to hold you on the line. I thought that was insane. And I'll let you go. What do you think? She basically said, fuck them grown ass kids. We ain't responsible for. This you is feeling a, like 
this is a reality, and this is going to hit home for a lot of people. A lot of people. People that are from the States. A lot of people that have parents that came from out of the States. Because I talked to a lot of uh, people whose parents migrated here from other countries. Shout out to y'all. Shout out to y'all. And the fact, and, and only reason why I say bring them up specifically is because sometimes they can have very tough parents when it comes to just your fucking life, what you decide to do with your life, the way you was brought up, X, Y, Z. Um, this woman says, I don't owe you shit, and you don't owe me shit. You write about me not owing you nothing. I don't owe you as my parent. My son owes me nothing. I owe him everything. Yeah. I literally brought you here. You did not ask to be here. And this is a lot of times what y'all just heard from that lady in that audio is classic how your parents will manipulate you. Your parents will use the fact, the fact that they getting older, the fact that you're an adult now, the fact that this X, Y, Z to absolve themselves from any trauma that you've had from your childhood, from anything that happened. Because guess what? You know what happens? We be going through shit when we kids and we grow up and realize, damn, you know what? That was kind of fucked up. Yeah. That, that happened. And what do your parents do? They make all types of excuses and saying, it's just like what happened with Monique and her son. Yeah, that this wasn't a good look. This man experience as a child, you're responsible for that. It's just so much, bro. I had literally, I remember I had that thing on the podcast where I was talking about how your parents will manipulate you by saying certain shit. Yeah. It's the same fucking thing, bro. People be getting their ass whooped their whole childhood, not allowed to do this, told they got to do that, all types of abuse. Yeah. Then when you get older and you don't fuck with your parents, they want to play this, oh, well, one day I'm not going to be here. And you know what? You lucky to have a mom. Do you know how many people don't have? Bro, I'm telling you, there's so many manipulation tactics. This sounds like somebody who fucked up their kid. Fucked up their the kid. The kid grew up. And, st- and didn't forget. And said, oh, you know what? When I was a kid. XYZ was fucked up. And the parent is still trying to manipulate and gaslight and act like they're not responsible for who you are. Who you are as an adult is a direct result of your parents raising you from zero to 18. It's like when people whoop their kid ass. You're at home whooping your kid's ass when they don't do what you want them to do. They go to school, and when they ask another kid for a toy or a crayon or whatever, and the kid don't do what they want them to do, and then they proceed to slap the hell out of the other kid, you're getting a phone call, and you wonder why your kid is acting up in school, but they're acting like you. And you're going to hear that and say, Dad, oh, when he come home, I'm smacking him again. And then you're going you're gonna, to, right, you're gonna, he's going to come home, you're going to repeat the behavior. And you wonder why nothing works. He can't control his emotions. And you, you just can't chalk it control up. yours. But these are the same motherfuckers. These boomers are the same motherfuckers that will come out and say, see, these kids just need these an ass whooping. These, these kids just, it's this new gentle parenting stuff. It's this new parent. See, back in the, I literally read a tweet the other day where this girl said, gentle parenting came when we got school shooters. Do you know how Miss? How much of misinformation They've been shooting in school since I was in middle school, 2007. Since I was little. Yeah. What are you talking about, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that shit just boils me up, man. Let me Especially, say this real quick. Specifically boomers. When boomers do that, because they be the main ones responsible for a hella trauma. And then want to act like, oh, I was just trying to be a good mom or a good dad. Fuck out of here. Not yet. For... For I will play devil's advocate just because we do have some boomers that listen to this podcast. Shout out to y'all. Some of y'all might not have made wise decisions, and this might be like, all right, this motherfucker's going at it. I'm hitting fast forward. My question to you is this lady is not speaking just from a certain standpoint. She said that she realizes that there's nothing you can say to them to fix what might have happened to them. And she's basically saying, maybe I didn't do it right. Maybe I was 16 when I had you, 
and did the best I could to even keep you alive. Maybe uh-huh. the cards were stacked against me. Some of our parents come from shit situations. Some of them come from good. Terrell was just at a place where he was talking to this dude who was talking to him. I mean, going to air him out. He's talking to Terrell like he's got a business. Yeah, you know, I got a couple businesses. Terrell was like, damn, how you get your business started? And he basically ended up telling Terrell, well, basically, it was passed down to me. Uh huh. Oh, but you out here big balling it, talking about you got two businesses, but you left off the part that it was given to you. Mm-hmm. So some people have that you started in the turf. Some people's parents, I look at our parents, me and Terrell, if they ain't do what they did, we could have been in a way worse position. We'd be way different people. For sure. So can I talk about the things that my parents did wrong? Yes. Can I point at everything y'all should have did better? Yes. But like this lady is saying, I give her a certain benefit of the doubt when I hear her saying, there's nothing we can do to fix that. And I don't have to live the rest of my life owing you because maybe I did screw up in the beginning. If she is willing to say, I'll do whatever, I'll be there for you, I'm, I'm there, I'm here now, I'm whatever, I'm willing to fix it, and you choose, because cool. some people, Terrell, and I'll give you this and I'll let you talk. Okay. Some people do choose to keep trauma. Therefore, they can justify the things that happen to them in life, especially bad things. This is a very true thing, bro. People mm-hmm. will choose to keep the trauma. You can move past it. But now when you move past it and you go and fail, it was just you. You can't blame it on the fact that, oh, well, I'm traumatized because of this. Like, now you can't learn. You can only point back. So I got to keep this broken wagon on me because when you point at me and say you moving slow, you see I'm lugging this wagon. Detach from it. But some people won't because it gives them an excuse to carry in life. And some of these parents know that they are that excuse. Y'all hear what Terrence just said? We got a good little back and forth because you being a brat today. Y'all know what Terrence just said? He's being very bratty. What Terrence just said is textbook gaslighting. Because you making it seem like (laughs) they holding on to this trauma when they can let it go. You sound like the dude that punched the chick in the eye, beat the shit out of her. You like, I bought flowers. I'm trying to hear. I'm trying to cook for you. I'm trying to make it work. So you want her know, to forget? Let me tell you what I did was what I did was I sent a blue heart. Exactly. See and now I he's sent a blue heart. I said, let me see how many days I can. That clip was see fucking how many days wild. I can get, keep this going. That clip was wild. He stepped out. Remember, he was like, I have a son. My son is one year old. <laughs> oh, nigga. So you did this recently. It was like, oh, how old is another one? Hold on, wait, Terry, because I'm not done. All right, go ahead. Um, what you just said is gaslighting because you're right. If the, if the parent is on some, yo, this was fucked up. I'm trying to fix it type shit. Cool. You don't get the response from the kid when you're receptive to how shit was not perfect. If you come to your kid and say, you know what? It wasn't great. I realize now that I've gotten older that I made mistakes, X, Y, Z, and I want to fix it. That is different. But you know what most of the parents are doing? What she just did. There's nothing I can do to fix it. It doesn't matter what you did. And guess what? Terrell. You just said, hold on, wait, you said... Is it? I mean, yeah, I did have you at 16. I didn't have it the best when you was little. Guess what? People, when you're talking to your parents and they say shit like that, I was 16 when I had you. I was 15 years old. We, we live in a house. We, it was roof, you had a roof over your head. You had this and that. Guess what? That's not your problem. I was the child. I didn't ask y'all to fuck and have me. You were 16 fucking. And you wasn't thinking about it then. And you made an adult decision that you had to live with it's not on me. That shit is on you. And guess what? You can't now try to put some of your bullshit in my pocket now that I'm old enough to understand that mm, this shit was actually not that great. You know what I'm saying? And that is where I sympathize with people and their parents because their parents will do shit like that and say, you had a roof over your head. Think about that scene. From- Terrell, come on. Wrap your shit up. Think about that scene from Fences. And let me respond. Because about- you're blowing the shit out of me. Because you're not only right. There's other aspects Tell of about you. The scene from Fences, go. The scene from Fences, what he said. You got a roof over your head. You got food in your belly. Because you're my son. It's my job. Yeah, you damn right, nigga. It is your job. I didn't ask to be here. You saying that shit like it's a point. He said, I ain't got to like you. Yeah, that was a bad, that was a joint. But you wanted to use it for your podcast opening. Pussy nigga. I did use it. And we use that shit on what? Father's Day. 
was fire. We played a J. Cole right after. Because that is being a real father because we just talked I, about how, remember we talked about, what, I don't know if that was on podcast or off, but they said, are you a dead? Sometimes, what was the name said? Sometimes for the kids to eat, you got to be a deadbeat. That was Schoolboy Q. Shout out to him. Blue Lips album just came out. We just did a reaction yeah, for it. Yeah, we just did a reaction for that job. He did. He said, sometimes for the kids to eat, you got to be a deadbeat. I understood what he meant so by So my thing is this. But, no, 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 wait. Because you okay. did. You definitely you resonated with that. And we got you on camera. Uh, I didn't resonate. You didn't resonate? I understood what he meant. But I also said on camera that, okay. Go ahead. I know what I said on camera. I know what you mean, too. All I'm going to say is, what do you think about that situation where sometimes... For the kids to eat, I had to go and do things where I wasn't able to be there. But it wasn't because I didn't love you or didn't care for you. I was doing that shit so all of us can stay afloat and we here. And now you got an opportunity and you're judging me for that path that I'm not against. I'm not. What if what if a situation like I said, what if a situation that somebody is admitting that they did and you're holding on to it? I'll say this. This is the reason why I resonate with it. It's not only the parent what's the name situation. I've definitely experienced this. Before I was with A-Train, I was with somebody who had trauma in their life. And instead of them ever being able to address anything with themselves, the, their last resort was always, oh, well, I have a traumatic background. So, fellas, some of y'all will deal with this same thing. You ever deal with, you ever talk to a girl and you realize that some of these niggas deal with this, Terrell? You and your girl, every time y'all argue and you start making sense, she starts crying and then all of a sudden she's sad as fuck and she say stuff like, uh, I just feel like my background is this. Oh, my trauma is this. I got trauma too. And so do you. People will do that shit to... People will do and that. And you're using your trauma so that you don't have to deal with your own self. But some Terrence, of you are... Left, there, no. Hold some on of you are pulling a wagon of trauma behind you and you think that it's attached on to you, but it's you holding on to it. But the person and it's that... because you are afraid of putting it all on you. You would rather... Give it to somebody else. I'm telling you, the person that gave you the trauma can't also be the one to tell you you're carrying trauma. You need to let go. That's true. They but but you're right. Two things can be true. You still need to let go of your trauma. This lady is saying, I'm not going to live the rest of my life feeling bad. Even though what she did was bad. I just see the other side of it. But what you're saying is right. I'll give you that. And what the nigga saying. All right, come on. Put y'all thoughts in the comments or what y'all think about that because parental trauma is definitely a serious thing. And videos like that is not... Bro, I have literally been in a fucking loophole of that. Bro, I have, there's podcasts that I have liked or have listened to where the dude bring their mom on and their mom think it's a regular podcast and they airing her out for being abusive. Terrell is a beast, y'all. I'm going to send him this one. This is just moving it forward a little bit. Fuck mm -hmm. these kids. Mm -hmm. If we beat mm -hmm. their ass and made them feel like shit and told them they wasn't going to be shit, at least they had oatmeal in their bellies. I do feel like that was fucked up. That's like, imagine them saying, that's kind of like how they say about us needing to get over slavery, y'all like. If you're still, you know, they're trying to take it out of schools. They're trying to say, well, we shouldn't still be harping on it. comparing everything to slavery. You don't think that that's similar to people saying, if you're still, look, I didn't do anything to you. Yeah, that's not that's my just, fault. Yeah, but there's like generational damage done that can never be. I don't see how you think that that's not the same, but what else? She's literally saying, if you think that and you can't fix your life, you're fucked up. We stayed on the parent topic real quick because I know y'all saw that girl that was singing the national anthem. I don't think it was the NBA All-Star game. But she sang the national anthem. Young girl. It was a Pacers game. It was a Pacers game. Sweetheart, young. And guess what? She didn't sound that good. She actually did not sound good at all. Trail play. Gotcha. We ain't got to air her out. We don't got to play the whole thing. But let her get it. Okay. I let, let her get it. Come on, let her. All right. All right. 
So she's not that great. She's not that great. My first question to Terrell, do you think that they should have even let her get up there and do that, knowing that she might have faced some backlash afterwards? Should you let your kids compete in things that you know that they aren't talented in? I think this is different because this isn't like a competition. This isn't like, you know what? He's not that good, but he's out there competing. And or she's not that good, but she wanted to try it. Yeah. Type space. You're putting your kid, basically, it's, it's the same as when people record their kid nowadays. Except this is just a little bit different because it was at a game. I don't think there's nothing wrong with her trying to sing, but I think honesty should come from home first. Yeah. I think honesty should come from home first. Your kid is going to learn about how harsh the real world is, whether in home or not in home. Yeah. So I think you can prepare them because as you can see, everybody is like, damn, she sucks. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and so I just feel like maybe I shouldn't have put her up on the stage, y'all. Y'all, y'all gotta be keep it a hundred. Yeah. Like I like what you said. Honesty starts at home. Honesty should start at home, yeah. Honesty should start at home. I think parents, look, every this girl put everybody thinks their kid is so great, but they're not. And that's true. And I understand that. That's yeah. true. I mean, because your kid fucking picks up a fork and eats a bean, and you're like, look at this motherfucker. He's learning how to do life. He's learning how to eat. You think that it is a miracle. A big <laughs> thing I'm in that stage. Yeah. Now. All I was going to say is, considering how y'all take a look at what happened with Blue Ivy when she got on that stage with Beyonce, I'm sure Beyonce did that to just let, Beyonce, to just let Blue Ivy live her little childhood young dream. But I think Beyonce, even she was surprised to see some of the backlash that Blue had to face. And I know that was hard to watch Blue face it. That's why I said, you might want, I might let my kid play a sport. My parents let me play basketball when I was young, y'all. And the real story is I was not good. One time I shot a three and right in front of my mother was sitting right here. My mom said, shoot it, T. I said, fucking mama right there. I'll never get the ball I'm shooting this bitch. When I tell you I, I was shot. from Steph Curry Island, I said, I'm launching it. The shit hit the top of the backboard. It hit the fucking beam over here. They had to go and get the ref is going to get the ball. <laughs> Y'all getting back on. And deep. he walking back with the ball bouncing on his way back. Like, I remember my coach looking at me like this. And that was one of the moments where I said, you know what? I'm trash at this shit. And I'm, I got my mother right here. Yeah, and but you see, how old was you? I was probably nine, ten. Just not, just wasn't good. All I'm gonna say is this: if I got online and everybody was replaying that shot, that would have been ten times worse. If yeah. I, it, it was already kind of like what it was for my mom, Dukes, right there, because even me, kind of you as a kid, you think. You, as a kid, you need to hear, oh, my God, you did so good. Otherwise, you're going to think, I didn't do that good. Or Terrell, like you said, maybe honesty starts at home, but when she gets off that stage, she is looking to see how she did. And I don't think getting off, people are going to say, oh, my God, do you know what you just did up there? That shit was trash. But you know what? She may live in a household that applauds effort over success. And that's something that people should pick up when you have a kid. That's why... There's this TikTok going around where this guy said, never tell your kid good job. And people received that fucked up. So I can never tell my kids they're doing a good job in school. And he never, he didn't say that. It was kind of like a shocking tagline. What he meant was, if your kid goes to school and does a painting, right? Macaroni drawing or some shit like that. And they bring it home. And you say, good job. Oh my God, this is amazing. You're the greatest artist ever. They start to receive that information like, okay, I got to go and do this. And then when I bring it to you, you're going to tell me that I'm great. So when they're not great at something that they try, and they're not met with the, oh, my God, you're so good at basketball, it's kind of harder for them to, uh, to accept. Yeah. So when they bring you home that macaroni drawing, and you say, wow, this is, wow, this looks great. What do you think? What's your favorite part about it? It teaches them to think introspectively, like, yeah. well, I like that I use blue, and I like that I use this, because I was thinking about using green, but I use purple. And then you applaud so, the thoughts. You applaud oh, effort. Great. It looks like you, you tried. You thought of blue. Yes. It looks like you tried really hard on this. It looks like you worked your hardest on this. I love it. Boom. Yeah. Now, it's not about 
if I won or not. It's about if I gave it my all. Those are the kids in the locker room picking niggas' chins up. Yeah. The other kids that's used to being told you're so amazing from when they're a fucking baby, they the ones sitting on the court crying. The motherfuckers that's lifting everybody up are the ones that understand, you know what, y'all? We gave that shit out all. We just didn't. And sometimes it take motherfuckers years to learn that. Nah, yeah. Why did you get me in this bag for this podcast? <laughs> I thought you was going to let me get in, but you you be... You, be, you, you got me sweating. He's, he's got me sweating. Pause. What's pause <laughs> about that? What's pause Chad, about you that? you cannot say... Okay, so what if I say... Oh, man, this man's got me on my... Hey, look, I'm on the grind. Pause. That's nothing pause about that. What's the grind? Oh, look, oh, look, what? Oh, look, I'm on the grind right now. Yeah, I'm on the grind. Oh, my bad. I don't want y'all to think I'm black. My bad. I'm, I'm working hard. Whoa, what's wrong with grind? You think we... we you think... We think it's something. Tans, you, you got me sweating. You say you got me sweating because he talking and he says pause. Because some of y'all might be thinking I'm talking about men's sex. You are ridiculous. I've been saying this, this nigga since. Said, all right. Y'all can never say that I have not been dead ass on my shit for a minute. Who wants tickets to the Washington Wizards and Jazz? <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, whatever, Terrence. I didn't get to go to a Wizards game. I'll hold, I haven't seen the new unis. I didn't go to any game this year, y'all. Trust. You're not missing much. Try to get tickets when Steph comes to town. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you can, y'all don't realize that that is the real life of a Washington basketball fan. If, if Bron's coming... Then getting tickets for the game is going to be whatever. Otherwise, you could get tickets to that jazz game easy tonight. Mm -hmm. You might get courtside joints. I'm dapping Bill up before the game. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even play in them. I'm way. getting ready to say, what you talking about? <laughs> All right, Beth, I do have Tech Corner. It's a very short one. Um, big shout out to Tech Corner. But uh, we got to get a graphic for that. All uh, right. Xbox is opening doors to their exclusive games, potentially going to other game systems. Mm -hmm. Shout out my boy Cino. He sent me that. Yep. Potentially, mm -hmm. we could potentially see, hopefully, I would love to have Halo on PS5. I would love to get Gears of War on PS5. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, they're copying the Nintendo uh, blueprint. Oh, okay. Where Nintendo kind of opened their doors to, like, not... Um, Giving the games away, but accepting other yeah, like games as Namco, well. Namco, all mm -hmm. the old classic arcade games. Yeah, and it's yeah. it's also I'm sorry, it's, it's it's a two it's like a two way thing, or not kind of where they could potentially not only uh let some of their games go, but they could open the door for other people, uh, other exclusive console games to come to Xbox. Yeah, so that's dope to hear. I'm interested to see what actually is going to come of it, but also something that's more um pressing in tech news is I took a trip to the Mercedes dealership this weekend because I was like, you know what? I'm getting that itch again. But I was humble when I went up this <laughs> I told this stupid ass I not to go humble. up there. I went up that joint and said, show me the AMG. He went up there like a young and nigga. I did not. Oh, you want to see the AMG? Right this way. Broke nigga. Yeah, I'm not right. getting it. That nigga thought I was about to buy that joint for sure. Keys right there. And you know what? I like when people think that I'm... You probably yeah, yo, thought I, I was coming you. in here looking for that C-Series. Nah, show me the AMG. So and he didn't know I'd be going in there looking at a C-Series. I don't know the fuck you're talking he about. Wasn't, he wasn't a... Uh, he didn't think I was in you that know, you, You're not a nigga that's supposed to be looking for an AMG. You're not that guy. Fuck you. I can't look at the uh, AMG. Fuck out of here. This nigga wanted to see it. Just make niggas at a car show. Go ahead. Anyway, we were talking about the, uh, the EQ models and whatever. And they were talking, and he was telling me how Mercedes and a couple of other people are pulling all the way out of EV. Once those EV, the last EVs they have, this the, the EQB, the EQS, once those joints sell, they're not going to do more electric cars, at least at this time. Because electric cars come with like a lot. We talked about this before. come with a lifestyle. You got to be able to have an electric car. Hell yeah. They want 135 grand for the Mercedes electric joint. And so it's ridiculous. The only reason why I bring that up is because Apple, you know, Apple was rumored to do an electric car. And, not, and Sony. And Apple just announced that they're not, they're not they're doing shelving it. that. They don't, they don't even see themselves doing it's it. It's going to be $700,000. Yeah. And it's just because it's, uh, the world isn't ready for it. 
to say. I would be interested to see a BMW and Range Rover and some of these other people. I was going to tell you, I it. feel like you're not giving Tesla enough credit. I feel like Teslas are dope. Teslas have, they are the, the EV. Feel me? Mm-hmm. So everybody else is copying my swag. Wish you could. Uh, <laughs> everybody else is, is that. We did it first. Um, they definitely. We have the most affordable options. These motherfuckers. All right, bet Benz, BMW. Y'all are putting y'all EVs and starting on the premium side. This big, luxurious, beautiful flat screen TV with an engine coming out. Oh, never mind. A battery for you to drive. Fuck this. Tesla. You can get a dope Tesla used if you want right now for 25K. It's going to be old. 30. But your yeah, entryway you can get a 20- into EV starts at 25K. I don't need my entryway to EV uh, Terrence, but if you get an being a old- $135,000 Benz. But if you think about it, if you get an older model Tesla, right? And you're right about Tesla. Tesla does have the, the most flexibility in terms the of most like options price. Too. They got the $100,000 whip. But they also got the thirty thousand dollar Model Three standard that a, you know you could start your EV journey. But it's just funny that a lot of these companies are pulling out. And you're right, Tesla is definitely the anomaly. They that's why I feel like companies. Yeah. A Mercedes announced that they wanted to be fully. The dude told me from the dealership. He said we announced that we wanted to be fully electric by twenty thirty. And we he said we literally just had a call where we said. Fuck it. Fuck that. Can't you imagine all the money they're going to put into it to maybe these motherfuckers buy it? And then the way they're going to charge their car. I've never seen a Benz over there at the Supercharge and or even a, in none of the charges. And that's the thing, too. I was telling him. I was like, bro, you used to could get a brand new Altima yeah. for nothing. Your car note would be like 250 bucks. It ain't a fucking Lexus. That's why they used to say, what are you riding around on the... Look, what I rap for to put your rap for. You nigga, you a bitch with your Honda Accord. They always picked on them cars. But now, brand new, them joints your car no like four, five, six. Yeah. Um, last I do, hold on, let me say mm-hmm. this real quick about that. Once scarcity hits, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Or not scarcity hits, but once a product is not really seen like that, I feel like you'll see shit like this happen all the time. This reminds me of the chicken sandwich wave. Popeye's... Goes yay yay with a chicken sandwich. Uh-huh. That joint does numbers. And next thing you know, everybody got chicken sandwiches out. I just had the wing stop honey, the hot honey lemon, hot honey rub chicken sandwich. I'm letting y'all know right now. Wing stop might got one of the best chicken sandwiches. How's that bun though? That bun was fire. Or uh, I think it was a uh an artisan joint. I'm not really a big chicken sandwich guy, man. Mm-hmm. Hey, look, me neither. All I'll say is But you're right though. There are gonna be a lot of these little companies that say, "Hey, chicken sandwich." That shit's coming off. McDonald's. You remember McDonald's had them chicken sandwiches on the menu? Oh yeah, four A, four B, four C, Southern style, country style. That shit went right away. So I guess it's just weird to see a vehicle be something mm-hmm. like that. But I think that's smart for them to pull away from that. What else you got on there? Last thing I got is uh, more music is leaving TikTok, y'all. More music. So WGMG never came back? UMG and TikTok have not agreed on terms, and there's more artists that they're pulling this week. Oh, my gosh. So, I mean, not that it's like a independent artist. If y'all got music, post, 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 because they're going to need sounds. I've been on that You thought you was good? Hopefully they don't pull a Doja off. I want to talk about it. Yeah. I want to tell you all. Yeah. Doja's next. Y'all know I'm becoming a very big Doja fan, and I'm thinking about doing a special video for you know for the feed for the women hip hop artists. You know, I was thinking about that. I think that I might give these are some of the video ideas I have. I want to do a ranking video of my my current rank of all of the women hip hop artists, but do it in a creative way. I'm not like some of you niggas. I'm like I'm not like none you niggas. Stop okay. treat me like I'm one you niggas. Uh, and I was thinking me and Terrell do, and Terrell don't, ain't gonna like me saying this. I think we should do Vultures 1 versus her loss. I'm sorry. I will. I feel like Vultures Yo, 1. Do y'all think that would be a good video? Would make such a great battle against her loss. Vultures, I swear to you. The first. It has aged beautifully. Both albums. Vultures has aged beautifully. Vultures has aged beautifully. It is a beautiful. I love that album. And it's not perfect. But neither is Terrell thinks that her loss is something that he might need to newsflash. It ain't really all of that potent. It ain't really all of that crazy to be saying that it's so much better than Vulture's one. 
Terrence, I just don't, y'all tell me what y'all think. Vultures has eight great tracks. The second half of the album is great. The first half of that album was rough. Very rough. And it's not enough. Paid is fire. Paid Back to me. Fire. Not enough of her laws, bro. True. Yes. See, I have middle of the ocean. You have all right. That's like we me saying my of, best song, my we better. Even song. out of terms of trying to say, saying, <laughs> and you're not. I, I have something that's that's you're, beating you're that not to me, beating. Terrence. You're not. Ryan, Ryan, with F and then they like the whole hand. Terrence, I'm gonna win. You are a fan ass nigga. That's what I was gonna tell you. Like, look, think about Terrence, this. I not only y'all have, will sit there and talk about Kanye West lyrics, right? But y'all will sit there. Terrell yesterday he said he was singing privileged rappers, right? You know, like, oh, what you gonna play when I play privileged rappers? I said, you think privileged rap is so dope, but listen to what the nigga's saying. Oh, look. Uh, let's head second to the bank. Tell her to open the safe. I hate a privileged rapper who don't even know what it takes. That shit was fire, It man. really ain't that. Uh, look, I told her to get to the rainbow. That's because her neck is a frank purr. Oh, but y'all not going to hold y'all man accountable. That was fire, Terry. That, that song? That's because her neck is a frank purr. Okay, we can nitpick lyrics. Beautiful bitch. No, no, I'm beautiful saying. Beautiful titty butt well, I'm, I'm not nitpicking. You going to do that. You're nitpicking that lyric. That song I'm, is fire. I, it, but that's my thing. You can't say a song fire because you so nitpicky on Ye. But if you get out your way, Vultures once stands Vultures tall next to her law. does nigga. not, Terrence. I got treacherous what you twins. Gonna do? What you going to do, you when, gonna I do when I play? Back outside, boys. I'm toting the 70 on the strip. I'm ready to die. Coming to trash He's and bend the corner. He's not. I am. You're not. And I got niggas that are. Back outside, boys. I'm making music and I'm <laughs> taking care of my son. Fuck out of here. And what is this nigga doing? Okay, bet. But guess what? You don't have a better song on your album. I don't think Burn is arguably a better song than every song on her loss. I'm sorry. I did like it. I started. She turned. That song is low key the best on the album. Uh, Back to Me is a fire song. Let's no, it's not. Loading. Let's keep on and let's get going, girl. I know that. That's that shit is fire. Skip. Terrell, you're not. You don't have a better song on your album than Fuck Some, Carnival. You don't have a better song on your album than... How not, Terrence? You don't have a better song on your album than Fuck Some. You don't have a better song on your album than Carnival. You don't have a better song on your album, Let Me Go and Look at My Album, because I'm forgetting my Trizax. You don't got a better song than... Bro, songs like... Oh, oops, sorry. Songs like Do It, Paperwork. We could... A King... Have y'all King really listened great. to King? I'm going to play Hours in Silence. Beg, in forgive me, beg forgiveness. We've gone too far. Your man. He's, it's an easy point because he likes Breezy. Let me tell y'all this. Are the albums very close in comparison? Maybe not. Maybe you love that album more. But I just feel like we would have fun with it. I'm somebody who would put out a good fight with all this. The smoke got me talking in Dutch. On a pill and I beads so what? Come I'm on, bro. on me, I'm crushed. She leaning on me. I'm a crutch. That I'm song, Ted. That song. I don't just, even need a deluxe. But you, oh, what, I what are you gonna? Y'all don't have a spin bout you. You and Ty Dolla Sign, yay. Y'all don't have a spin bout. What the you. fuck are you talking about? Burn is better than spin bout you. Burn is better than spin bout you. What is spin bout you really without Drizzy? Twenty one. Uh, I got feelings for you. Trey, you ain't loving the crow. This, How many bodies you got? This Pray ABC mob. that you dealt with so late. He is just as... I just about told Terrell. She want to go to the highlight Savage. room, baby, show it all. 21 Savage and Kanye West, low-key. Their impacts on the two albums are one and the same. They both helped and kind of hurt the album a little bit. You ain't getting ready to play a uh, message to my brother now. Toned up, your... bitch, you got a six-pack. Look like she used to play volleyball. <laughs> I wish I was 21 Savage, I swear to God. He don't even got to be lyrical. Y'all niggas will say, look. Nah, he did just be saying anything. He just say whatever because he got a sound. Hey, look, we're going to move forward a little bit. One last topic to talk about before we get up out of here. Uh, we're not going to talk about Rihanna's performance for $6 million in India. All I'm going to say, that was dope. She's getting money. If y'all got a problem with her performances, she just pushed out two babies. And I think she still might be pushing out another one. Maybe not. But look, I don't think she did that to be the best performer, y'all. Fuck y'all. Who give a fuck what y'all think? Beyonce yeah, can Beyonce can stick to the best uh, performer thing. We we was yeah, we've been it's, busy. It's, uh, the Navy been busy getting money and, and making millions, and we just doing that. Uh -huh, Don't worry scamming, about performance. Scamming motherfuckers because we just did a savage. performance on the Super Bowl. We just did a Super Signing Bowl. people up for them fake ass memberships. What was what was your girl doing? Nothing. We just launched Sacred too. Fuck out of here. We got hair. We got perfume. 
Yeah, y'all trying everything to catch up to a billion, billionaire queen. We've been. We well, already a billionaire. a billionaire. I've been a billionaire longer than you. My husband, the reason you a billionaire. Fuck out of here. You wouldn't be shit without my guy. Okay, guess what? When your guy flies, flies somewhere else and leaves you bye bye, guess what you have? Half half. Me, I'm always gonna have my Beyonce. Billions, and that's if ASAP is here or not. Yeah, okay. What, let's talk about those scams. Let's talk about. Let's talk about. Them. We didn't scam anybody. Let's talk about you though. You didn't really didn't really sell much. to have to scam. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Terrell be talking, y'all, and we have no idea what we talking about sometimes. I know what I'm talking Terrell, about. Terrell, you, you don't know what the fuck you're talking right. about, and you're talking out your ass right now. Look up them Savage Fenty members. Y'all don't lie. Motherfucker, your mother was actually a victim of that Savage scam. They told me I was I had the membership. I ain't even know I bought it. I'm getting charged. <laughs> What's All the right, last look, topic? Come last on. topic, LeBron James just crossed 40,000 points in the regular season. He is the first ever to do so. This is a moment in history, y'all. When you're an old-ass person and they say that the point leader is LeBron James at 40,000 points, we might not ever see that again. Understand, he passed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar like 1,800 points ago mm -hmm. type shit. 40,000 is um is a is like to me it's bigger than Wilt Chamberlain scoring a hundred points in the game. I think if you could go back and watch a podcast and they said, yo, last night Wilt scored a hundred points, it's crazy. You would be like, yo, that's nuts. That's NBA history. Nah, yeah. This is NBA history, bro. I got some facts too, but I'm gonna let you speak. No, I, I do think it's dope. I think LeBron is the GOAT, man. I feel like he just his longevity, uh watching him in that game the other night, I forget who they was playing. Uh, but he had like nine threes in the fourth quarter, something crazy like that. Going All off. them threes back to back. And I started thinking about it. I said, damn, this nigga in December will be 40 years old. The fact that he's still playing like this at 40, 40 is insane, bro. It's just something that we've never seen before. We may see it again. We probably will see it again. Especially these pandemic born babies. They're going to be crazy when they get of age. But I, th I, th I think he deserves the respect. I think they should have stopped the game when he hit the 40, let him salute. I would have let him throw the powder in the air because, dog, this is some shit that we've never seen before. It shouldn't have been taken as light as it was. The only thing that I want to say, lastly, the tweet that really blew my mind, or maybe the fun fact about the 40,000 points that really blew my mind, was the fact that it said, add up every point scored by, and listen to this list, add up every point scored by Shea Gilgis Alexander, Alexander Luca Giannis, Jalen Brunson, Anthony Edwards, Stephen Curry, Jay, Jason Tatum, Nikola Jokic, Kevin Durant, Anthony Davis, Tyrese Maxey, De'Aaron Fox, Trey Young, Dame Lillard, Devin Booker. They said, damn, he's still going. Donovan Mitchell, DeMar DeRozan, Paolo Banchero, Carl Anthony Towns, Pascal Siakam, Kawhi Leonard, Kyle Kuzma, damn, hold on, what DC you Family, Mikael Bridges, Jaron Jackson Jr., Alperin Sagoon, Joel Embiid, Jalen Brown, and Brandon Ingram this season, and you almost hit bronze 40K. Oh, from all their points they scored this season? From this season. Oh, okay. Those yeah. are literally some of the top players in the league. Nah, yeah, that's crazy. You add all of their shit together, and you almost get bronze 40. He has played for so long. I'm out here with niggas that was born when I was drafted. That's crazy to me. This nigga can say, add all of y'all points up. Because look, you see how they say we will almost get his 40K? He could say to another team, I've scored more than everybody standing on this floor, period. Mm -hmm. Everybody that's standing on this floor, I've scored more than all of y'all combined. That is the GOAT. Yep. That is the greatest basketball of all time. LeBron James. I love Kobe with all of my heart. I'm still going to get a Kobe tat. I'm not getting LBJ tatted. I would get Kobe his shit tatted. But even that doesn't block me from saying what we're witnessing is historic. And I'm not going to be it the is. one that said that it wasn't. It, it is, is man. To me. It is. It's just like when you watch Brady play Asante Samuel Jr. He's throwing against Asante Samuel Jr. Do you know I know your father? Right. I put one of them on your father. Paul. <laughs> put one up, put a ring on the ring. But why is it pause? <laughs> You're, right. <laughs> You're right. Anyway, <laughs> lastly, another goat. This is more history all in one weekend. Caitlin Clark, 
she passed the NCAA D1 divisional uh, points record all time points, y'all. She passed Pete Maravich. Yep. Pistol Pete, I think that's him. I don't know if it's another guy. Uh, if it's a, whatever. Bottom line, she passed him for career points in NCAA D1. She, she is arguably the best college basketball player ever. I think she is. To me, hey, you, you. I think she's a immense talent. She just declared to go to the W, so the Indiana Fever are just getting ready to be a fucking nightmare next year. They jersey some of the best in the league. Uh, whatever. I hate it so much because I just wish that we were worse last year so we could get her. That's how good she is. I wish we were yeah. worse last year so we could get her. She is getting ready to set the, the W on fire. Shout out to her. Nah, yeah, honestly, watching her highlights, I knew she was good, but watching her highlights, that buzzer beater she shot, I said, God damn, this girl, she is a ballatician. Telling you, she ain't balling on no budget bill. Yeah. <laughs> that was a <laughs> terrible song. You're tripping. By you Young Thug's girl, Carly. I'm balling on no budget I'm a get you deal. That was a terrible song. But shout out to Caitlin Clark. I think it's dope. I think what she's doing will bring... She's the star, the next star that the W needs to come up there with an Asian... Well, I can't wait to see what she does in the W. Because let me tell you something. Them coaches in the W that be coming out in them interviews, they like, she ain't doing that shit up here. They do be saying that about her. And, and I feel like she will. A, a shot like that, like, she'll just shoot that shit and make it. I'm interested to see what she does in the WNBA. I'm interested to see what she does with talent at that level. She st I still want to see what she can do up against LSU. That's going to be a game where I want to see that rematch. Look at what Sabrina Ionescu is doing in the W, and she didn't have a college career like uh, Caitlin. That's Caitlin. true. I feel like Caitlin, she was a bit, she was a bit. Caitlin is coming down, and at the logo, you have to put your hand up. What? <laughs> She about to cook in the WNBA. I'm definitely and think about this, y'all. Maybe she's not coming to my Mystics. Maybe she's not going to your Sonics. Maybe she and they just got uh, what's her name? I forget her name. Candace Skyler, Skyler Diggs. Oh yeah. Uh, maybe she's not going to your Connecticut Sun or New whatever. York Liberty. Maybe she's not going to your Liberty. But guess what? Whoever she's going to, she's coming to your city. And for that one day. You think I'm not going to try to get tickets to see Caitlin Clark against my Mystics? This is why I say this is the best thing for the W. Some of y'all are going to say, man, fuck WNBA. But hold up. That Caitlin Clark is now not a college girl. Uh -huh. Now she's going city to city, still balling with the W. Watch the league grow. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm going to say. It was dope to see Travis Scott, Jake from State Farm, other celebrities out. It was dope. Soon y'all going to see. Did you think they're going to be at the WNBA game? Hell yeah. Watch. Y'all will see. Mock my words. Blast for me. I got another question they was asking me. Did you have a movie suggestion of the week? My movie suggestion of the week is a movie called... Oh, I just watched it. Hold on. Wait. Let me see. Mike Epps' new stand-up is oh, my movie suggestion of the week. I to watch that. It's called... Um, it is called Ready to Sell Out. Sorry. That joint was funny as shit. I don't know if it was because I was high, but that joint was funny as shit. I do smoke sometimes. I don't know if people know that. People do not know that about. I do Terrell. sometimes. He is a. I do sometimes smoke a little weed. He's a occasional guy. I'm an occasional guy. He came guy. across with you know while people started saying you know it is free you can get it for over there fuck it. Yeah, he came with that way. But that joint was hilarious. I don't know why. <laughs> I just think Mike Epps is funny, he bro. Funny he does not shit, have to be yeah. much to be funny. But uh, that's my movie suggestion of the week because it was dope. And my shout out to Mike Epps. Mike Epps is one of the comedians that has stand up specials. You can't nah. say that about Mike. Nah, hell yeah. Damn, what was my movie suggestion? Did I just add it to my Netflix? It Did I have another one? I was going to see probably Marcel with the shell. I'm going to just say that mine's is John Wick. I watched John Wick this week. If some of you haven't seen John Wick, join your boy. I'm watching the, trilo the trilogy. Some mm -hmm. people are saying that the John Wick 2 is one of the better ones. Probably because it's like, mm -hmm. now we can do it for real with more money. Third uh -huh. and fourth always means, fuck it, let's try it again. Yeah. You know? <laughs> But and are all the John Wick? You said all the John Wicks are on Netflix. All of them are on Netflix. I'm about to watch all of them. I watched the first one and the second one. I gotta watch the third one. I just want to watch them just to catch up. John Wick's gonna be on mine. One thing that I am looking at getting into. This is one that I'm gonna get into at A Train. Is a show called Couples Therapy. Y'all have probably seen uh -oh. plenty of clips from this show on TikTok and Instagram. But it's on Showtime. It's the show called Couples Therapy. It just looks like it's a bunch of different couples with a bunch of different fucking problems. 
If you're in a relationship, I feel like you and your girl, you and your, your man, you and your person, y'all should sit down and watch it because sometimes you get a kick out of watching a motherfucker, you know, go two other motherfucker, two other people go back and forth mm-hmm. for, about their problems. Sometimes you relate. Sometimes you watching this show and they say, maybe you should do this. Maybe you should do that. And you're like, you know what? I can pick up on that in my real life. That's, That's why I love movies like Marriage Story and stuff like that. Because I'm like, yo, I like what I pick up from stuff like that. You'd be surprised. Those are my two movie suggestions of the week. If I had to add another one, I would say mine would be The Wood, which is free on YouTube. Free on YouTube. We love that movie. You've never seen The Wood. It's a black classic. If you feel like, damn, I want to catch up on my... I want to see some of the movies that like black people I think is dope. That's one of our ones. The That's Wood. one of our ones. It is on... Uh, YouTube. YouTube. Free. They also just put Boys in the Hood back on Netflix. I got a video for that coming. Boys in the Hood been on Netflix. No. Me. It's been, it's been it's on Netflix for back. a minute, Terrell. It's been on Netflix for a minute. You, you, you're a late nigga. It just showed up you're, on you're my... A, you're a late green grass. You look like you uh, you look like a tall matcha right now, boy. Fuck out of here. Nigga look like a cup of matcha and the battery's dying. I gotta change it. Nigga looks like a cup of matcha. This nigga looks like a... You look like an island green right now, and boy. And that's nigga looks like a tropical smoothie. For episode 100 and... You look like the manager of six tropical Terrence, smoothies. Terrence, what you look like you manage, boy? A warehouse. You look like a nigga that you... No, I'm sorry. You look like you manage a hookah. Uh, look at his hat. He looks like he manages the El Pollo Loco in Orlando. This nigga's running chicken and beans everywhere. Fuck out of here, boy. I smelled you when you came through the door. And hey, Terrence, look at you. You have a... In the box. That's going to be it for Podcast 191. Y'all stay safe out there, man. It's hot weather coming, which that means you will get sick. Daylight savings on Sunday. Yes, set your clocks back. Till next time. Take it easy. Before.